All right, hello everybody. This is the GTM here. Um, basically recording this t tutorial here for uh, some of my intro to modeling students. So basically, I'm uh, going to set up an ambient occlusion pass, and basically we have to do that through Mental Array. But at the same time, I wanted to go ahead and show them how to composite an ambient pass with a regular diffuse render. As you can see right here, I have a completed render. Uh, no soft shadows or anything, just your basic somewhat three-point light setup. Uh, you know, some spotlights for fill light. Not spotlights, but uh, you know, some omnis for fill lights here to just to kind of illuminate this uh, model that I've done way back in the day. Uh, this model's pretty old. Um, actually, the model was, uh, it was uh, based off, uh, at least the inspiration was done uh, from from the Bubblegum Crisis series, it's an old popular anime cartoon, and the bike originally was the body of it was originally from uh, a model I did that was kind of inspired by the Akira bike, but I decided to make this some kind of floating. I don't know; it doesn't really possible, really doesn't make any sense. But it's some kind of like floating hovercraft type of bike. As for the gun, the gun I can't claim. That's uh, I forgot who the modeler was. Uh, I believe you can go to 3dtotal.com for that. I thought it was a pretty cool model, and I just wanted to place it in you know the hands of my little Android here. Uh, as for the textures, to be honest, I just dropped on some quick shaders just for the to do this demonstration. And these are ray trace shaders. Anyways, I went ahead and rendered this out. I'm going to go ahead and save it out as my diffuse pass, and I'm going to throw this on my desktop. So I'm going to call this diffuse. And I'm going to save it out as a JPEG. Actually, no. Make that a PNG. All right. Go ahead and save that out. Make sure the alpha is checked. Uh, not that we have anything we're alpha and out. All right. But I'm going to go ahead and close that out now. Now, with the camera in the same position, or the render, I should say, the, the, the position. I don't have a camera in there, but I, I was careful not to move the position of the last render. And if you do want to play it safe, I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control-C. And now I have a camera in my scene in case I de decide to move it around. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and set up my ambient occlusion pass. Now the first thing I'm going to do is uh, hit my M key. And we got to actually, the M key is to open up our material editor. But we got to actually um, set up our uh, mental ray render. Now you may have your render material editor may look like a, uh, like this right now if you're using 2011 otherwise I'm kinda old school so I'm gonna go ahead and just click my compact material editor alright next thing I'm gonna do is go to my render setup click that and the funny thing is I'm already in mental ray so if you need to get to mental ray you're gonna be in your common tab here and you're gonna look for the assigned render and chances are you're already in default scanline render so basically what you're doing is going to your common tab, hitting this little choose renderer box, and you should see default scanline render. I'm going to open that up, change it to mental ray. I'm going to press OK. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up my settings. I'm going to go to my renderer tab. I'm going to set this to 1, the maximum 64. And this will make sense in a minute here after I, you know, I set up my ambient occlusion shader. All right, I'm going to change my type to Mitchell, and to be honest, the only reason I didn't do that is because I've learned this from uh, another 3D artist uh, that went by the, I guess his website was by the, uh, the name of Everflow.com, and to be honest, he was the first person i ever seen write a really good, legit ambient occlusion, or how-to ambient occlusion tutorial, how to set up your, uh, you know, your ma materials, and to be honest, ever since that day, I found his site, uh, you know, I was able to pull out some really good looking renders that were composite with my diffuse, diffuse uh, renders. So uh, his website, I believe, is everflow.com if you want to check him out. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is go to my processing tab. I'm going to go to material override. I'm going to check that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my material editor. I'm going to click on a blank shader and go to standard. I'm going to look for my mental ray map. 
or this is otherwise like a mental ray shader. I'm going to double click that. In the surface slot, I'm going to go ahead and click that open. And I'm going to look for the ambient occlusion mask. I'm going to type in AM, and it should pop right up. I'm going to double click that. Now, remember we changed our, in our renderer tab, we changed that to 64. So I'm going to go ahead and change my sample weight to 64. And usually multiply that by 2. So the default was 16 times 2, 32. 32 times 2 is 64. And obviously, the higher you go, 128. The more, uh, I guess you can say, the more detail into your ambient occlusion passes. But at the same time, you're sacrificing more render time. Not that a big, not a big deal, though. The max distance in 2011, not sure why they put it at 0.4. But uh, I believe that will blow it out. So I'm going to go ahead and just go 0, 0.0 like this. And the last thing you want to want to do is um, I'm going to go to my parent level until that's grayed out. I'm going to name this Ambience, or you can call it Dirt Map uh, here. Ambient. Uh, I believe Everflow, he dot, in Everflow.com, he called it Dirt Map, which is no big deal. You can name it whatever, as long as you know it's your ambient pass. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go to my processing tab, which we did check on. So there you can see I'm checking it. I'm going to take this shader, drag it all the way to my material where it says none. This is going to pop open. Make it an instance. I'm just going to hit OK. Now with those settings all set, you know, your 164, your Mitchell, processing tab, material override check, ambient dragged over, you should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out. There we go. Now we got our ambient pass. And this might take a minute. And as you can see, we're getting all our soft shadows. Which really pop out the details of your model. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take this uh, ambient occlusion pass. I'm going to save it out. I'm going to just go ahead and save it as a PNG. Call this my ambient pass. Make sure your alpha is checked. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this render and my regular diffuse render that you saw at the beginning, and I'm going to composite the two, put them together. So I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Photoshop here. I'm going to open up my let's open up my ambient and my diffusion pass. Now here goes my regular diffuse pass and then here's my ambient pass. I'm going to go ahead and take this pass drop it right in here and we're going to actually uh, snap that. I'm going to make sure I have snaps on which I do. I'm going to go ahead and move that right in place. Alright now that I got both images on top of each other I'm going to close out the ambient so I'm right there. Alright so now I got my layer one which I can call ambient And now I have my regular diffuse pass. Now what you're supposed to do here is take the ambient pass. We're going to go ahead and um, drop our blend modes to multiply. Now you can see that we got our soft shadows within our render. But then you got to actually bring down your opacity to about 75. Right now if you feel like your render is a little too dark, you can always color correct it. So. I'm actually going to take my ambient pass and I'm going to go to images, adjustments, curves, and I'm probably going to raise that up a bit just to kind of brighten it up. And you know what? I can always stylize it as well if you want to change your colors around. So I might take my reds, bring them down a bit, maybe crank up my greens, give it a more stylized look. And. I don't know, let's see how our blues look. Yeah, let's crank them up. All right, anyways, but the idea here was to get our soft shadows within our render mixed in with our diffuse pass. So if I turn that off, you can see the difference. There without our ambient pass, now with it. Big difference in the details there. All right, and then you can just go ahead and save that out, and that's it. All right. Thanks for watching.